Hello friends, today we are going to discuss about somatization disorder. I am Dr. Suresh Badadmat, Professor of Psychiatry, working at Nimans, Bangalore. In this video, I will be introducing the concept of somatization, how this somatization evolved over a period of time, prevalence, comorbidity, assessment, treatment of somatization disorder, course and outcome in this video. Somatization disorder is also known by various terms such as Brickett syndrome, bodily distress disorder, hysteria, medically unexplained symptoms and also is known by various cultural syndromes. But however today we will be focusing somatization disorder from the concept how it is evolved. The word somatization was coined curiously enough by a mistranslation of a German word used by a psychoanalyst called as Wilhelm Stickel. This word which was used was Organsprache, that is the German word which clearly indicated organ speech, that means organ speaks, a cumbersome and a nebulous concept. And please remember, this word meant the conversion of emotional state into a physical symptoms. However, when the translation was tried, there was no equivalent word in English. Hence, the word somatization was coined. And this word became very popular over a period of time. Actually, the word meant avoiding emotional pain and converting them into somatic pain. This word somatization was popularized by Leposky. He also defined the term somatization as a tendency to experience and communicate somatic distress and symptoms unaccounted for by the pathological findings to attribute them to physical illness and to seek medical help for them. Later, it was also considered as Brickett syndrome. Paul Brickett's, in his very popular classical paper, related somatization to three different disorders. One is conversion phenomena, hysterical personality, multiple chronic unexplained somatic symptoms was what Paul Brickett's reported. Later, this was the first time Brickett's syndrome, which was given by Paul Brickett clearly came up with the important criteria. It is also known as St. Louis criteria or Finus criteria. This was the first time an objective way of diagnosing somatization was attempted. It required 25 symptoms out of 59 symptoms to diagnose Brickett syndrome or somatization disorder occurring across 9 out of 10 systems of our body. It may be CVS, CNS, per abdomen, bodily symptoms, sexual organs. So, somatization was the first time which was tried. That means the symptom should arise before the, year, before the age of 30 years. That was one of the important criteria. However, before Brickett syndrome, the word hysteria was also used. And this phenomena was also known as dissociation, somatization and conversion. How did this hysteria evolve? Initially, it was considered as a spirit possession in the body, hence these symptoms manifested. Later, since many of the women used to have the symptoms, they considered it to be wandering uterus producing the symptoms. Later, it was also known as protease. What is protease? A. See God noted for his ability to assume different forms. That is, hysteria can assume any form. Later, it was considered as an emotional condition. And it was referred to various organs, first uterus, then heart, and finally now central nervous system. But however, we need to understand somatization disorder is meant to diagnose a variety of somatic symptoms affecting different organ systems in the body. It classically presents with multiple somatic symptoms, but a relatively absence of any physical causation and presumptive but often unstated psychological cause, that is, converting psychological distress to physical pain. And these emotional symptoms are unable to express by the people, hence they refer to physical pain. Here, gender plays a major role. In somatization disorder, women represent more than the men. Many of the studies said 10 is to 1. However, changing socioeconomic status, cultural, Religious role also play a role in diagnosing somatization disorder, presentation of somatization disorder. 
There is an overlap between somatization disorder and functional medical syndromes such as fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, irritable bowel syndrome and all these add to the confusion. And one other word we need to remember that is alexithymia. This may be relevant at this point of time to understand there is no words for feelings. Alexithymia was a word coined by Siphinos. He said that a person who is unable to express his emotions are considered as alex alexithymia and it is almost equivalent to somatization disorder that was the way it was earlier understood. This term is based on a psychoanalytic concept that the patient somatizes because they are unable to express their feelings in words and convert them into somatic pain. But however, in ICD-11 and DSM-5, the somatization word has been removed. It, and this somatization word also initially replaced the hysteria and bricket syndrome, but now over a period of time, this word somatization has been removed completely and referred with the different names. The main reason being this word was stigmatizing, discriminatory and it was unsatisfactory for the scientific community to understand yes there are symptoms but we are unable to explain medically. At the same time you stigmatize the person telling that all these symptoms are in your head and almost equivalent telling that you are malingering. Hence this term somatization disorder, hysteria, Brickett syndrome moved out of the syllabus or maybe the medical terminology and at the same time these diagnoses was exclusively used against women. Hence feminist movement also played a role to remove this word somatization and now we need to understand the concept how somatization and somatoform disorder differ. Please understand somatoform is different from somatization. Somatoform disorders means it is an umbrella term for group of disorders who have a common presentation of overlapping symptomatology. That means they present with symptoms and we are unable to explain medically. That is relative absence of diagnosable medical condition. But presumptive but often unstated psychological cause is the commonest understanding between somatoform and somatization disorder. But however, somatoform disorder means it is an umbrella term encompassing conversion disorder, pain disorder, somatization disorder, hypochondriasis and dysmorphophobia disorder. That means somatoform is a bigger term and somatization is a part of it. Let's understand by this diagram. Here you can understand somatoform disorder. Disorders is an umbrella term in that it consists of conversion disorder, dysmorphophobia, pain disorder, somatization disorder and hypochondriasis. Somatization disorder is a part of somatos somatoform disorders. They all have in common feature of presenting with somatic symptomatology without a overt identifiable medical cause. In simple words, physical symptoms without physical illness was the term used earlier. But this was stigmatizing, discriminatory in practice, hence the term has been removed now. However, you need to understand the classificatory system. Here, the experiencing of symptoms can be divided into voluntary and involuntary. Involuntary means there is a physical symptoms which can be considered as somatic symptom disorder, the current word used in ICD-11, neurological symptoms which is conversion disorder, Preoccupation with symptoms considered as illness anxiety disorder or also called as hypochondriasis. If it is volunteer, that means either it is a factitious disorder that is sick role or else with if there is a secondary gain that is malingering. So this is how the rough classificatory system of understanding the experience of symptoms. Let's understand the diagnostic criteria for somatization disorder. Let's understand from ICD-11 perspective, that is World Health Organization's classificator system. Here it is called as bodily distress disorder. Here in ICD-11, we do not use the word somatization. It is considered as bodily distress disorder. Here the patient will have distressing multiple bodily symptoms. 
persistent preoccupation with symptoms or with the negative consequences of these symptoms. Doctor shopping in spite of examination, investigation and reassurance by the doctors earlier. Symptoms should be present for more than three months is very essential. Impairment in personal, family, social, educational, occupational and other important areas of the life. And however, further, this bodily distress disorder has been classified based on severity. Severity is based on degree of distress, preoccupation, persistence and the degree of impairment. If it is called as a mild bodily distress disorder means if the patient have symptoms where he is preoccupied and impairment is only 1 to 2 hours per day. Moderate means several hours per day with moderate impairment. Severe means most of the hours in a day with complete dysfunction is bodily distress disorder my dear friends. However, we need to also understand from DSM-5 that is Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorder from American Psychiatric Association. What do they discuss? Here, instead of somatoform disorder, they are considering it as somatic symptoms and related disorders. Here, somatization is considered as somatic symptom disorder, illness anxiety disorder, conversion disorder, factitious disorder, pseudocystosis, and variety of other related condition. Please remember this. Somatization disorder and hypochondriasis word has been abandoned in DSM-5. What does DSM-5 diagnostic criteria? The diagnostic criteria in DSM-5 clearly says there should be distressing one or more somatic symptoms, excessive thoughts, feelings or behavior related to these somatic symptoms, disproportionate and persistent thoughts regarding somatic symptoms, persistently high level of anxiety about health and health related symptoms, excessive time and energy devoted to these symptoms and health concern and symptomatic for more than three, 6 months in DSM-5. In ICD-11 it is only 3 months, here it is 6 months. And however, there is a core specifier under DSM-5 with predominant pain or else persistent symptoms. It is considered as mild if they have only 1 symptoms. Moderate means two or more and severe, more than two symptoms with multiple aches and pains is considered as severe somatic symptom disorder under DSM-5. Let's differentiate how ICD-11 and DSM-5 differs in somatization disorder. First and the foremost is the name. In DSM-5 it is considered as somatic symptom disorder whereas in ICD-11 bodily distress disorders. Diagnostic criteria, one or more distressing symptoms with excessive thoughts, feelings, behavior and health seeking. In ICD-11, one or more distressing symptoms not elevated by reassurance after clinical examination and investigation by the doctor. Specifier, here it talks about pain and duration is 3 months in ICD-11, in DSM-5 it is 6 months. Subcategories have been removed under ICD-11, whereas in DSM-5 also it has been removed. Hypochondriasis name has been abandoned in DSM-5 and continues to exist in a different form as illness anxiety disorder. Whereas in ICD-11, hypochondriasis has been moved into OCD and related disorders. Severity in both the case, mild moderate severe is there and the criteria almost similar. And also in DSM-5, based on the number of symptoms has been mentioned in DSM-5, ICD-11 does not talk about that. But however, it is based on preoccupation, duration and impact on functioning, the severity has been classified under ICD-11, my dear friends. Now, let's understand what is the pathognomonic symptoms of somatization disorder or bodily distress disorder or somatic symptom disorders. The pathognomonic features are persistent, intrusive, distressing and somatic preoccupations. Please remember this. It should be persistent either 6 months in DSM-5 or 3 months under ICD-11. It should be intrusive, distressing, somatic preoccupation, 
and invariably involving multiple systems of the body. They are unusual symptoms which cannot be easily diagnosable. The way they present and interpret them by the patient also is very unusual. Doctor shopping is common here. Dysfunction should be the hallmark to diagnose this and absence of medically explainable symptoms. But however, even if there is a medical explanation is there, but the severity, the presentation, <clears throat> if it is out of context with the presentation, still the diagnosis of somatization disorder can be made. The systems involved in somatization is not just only the body. It can be generalized body that is soma, gastrointestinal system, cardiovascular system, respiratory, urogenital, autonomic complaints, exhaustion, fatigue and various other systems are involved. Let's look into these symptoms, how they present in CVS. In cardiovascular, it will be presented as shortness of breath, trouble in breathing, breathing difficulties, chest pain, heart pain, palpitation, sweating, excessive perspiration are the presentation. In gastrointestinal system, it can be presenting as nausea, stomach, tummy upset, feeling sick, nauseated, constipation, diarrhea, alternate between diarrhea and constipation, stomach ache, pain in the stomach, bloating sensation, vomiting, throwing up, trouble swallowing, difficulty in swallowing, lump in the throat, heartburn, loss of appetite, dry mouth. The general symptoms, headache, dizziness, fatigue, overly tired, fainting, weakness, coming to musculoskeletal, back pain, neck pain, body pain, joints pain, and pain in the neck, soreness of muscles, joint pain, heaviness in the arms, others, tingling and numbing sensation, electrical sensation, twisting sensation, blurred vision, double vision, pain during micturation, difficulty in micturation, lump in the throat, amnesia, pain during intercourse, sexual problems. These are all the various symptoms which cannot be attributed to diagnosable medical condition can be considered as somatization disorder. Let's understand the concept of somatization. Here, the concept of Somatization can be understood by biopsychosocial model. Here, the somatization will have a predisposition genetically. That is very, very important. Nothing comes out of zero. That means genetic predisposition is very, very essential. The genetic predisposition will cause difference in physiology of our body. And whenever there is a stress or else, cultural or acultural stress, environmental stress that leads to behavioral sick role. That sick role gets attention and the behavior gets reinforced and further the person is unable to process his emotional distress and that leads to cognitive tendencies and psychopathology which further accentuates the biological phenomena and further the symptoms increases. So my dear friends, biopsychosocial conceptualization is basically an epigenetic phenomena of somatization disorder. And again, it can be easily understood by there is a bodily sensation which is there as a physiological phenomena because of genetic problems. <clears throat> that means a person has symptoms. These symptoms may be misfiring of the neurons or else a bodily Symptoms which cannot be explained by any reason like electrical sensation over the body. Here, there is no electrical current given to the body but the person feels that. But now the issue comes says, if the person starts interpreting these bodily symptoms into a severe illness which is life-threatening, this leads to preoccupation and disability, not able to work, emotional arousal, doctor shopping and understanding this illness to be a life-threatening leads to somatization. So here the issue here is there is a genetic underpinning of abnormal symptoms or else a sensation 
which are cognitively interpreted as life threatening which leads to somatization disorder or bodily distress disorder if you understand the concept from the reality testing versus symptom severity or else the illness conviction if you look into the both on the x axis and y axis you can understand if the reality testing is very good invariably it starts from the health anxiety towards the reality testing is poor to a hypochondriacal psychosis believing that he has an illness which is cancer which is going to kill him in next few days to the severity of the conviction again here also it moves towards from health anxiety to hypochondrial concern somatization disorder hypochondriasis bdd and psychosis so my dear friend it is a spectrum concept it's not just a categorical concept moving from one end of the spectrum to the other end of hypochondriacal psychosis let's critique this somatization disorder why this somatization has been considered to be a very stigmatizing discriminatory in practice here it is the failure of the scientific community to diagnose why these symptoms are arising and labeling them as psychological these symptoms are on your head in your head only but unfortunately since the medical science is unable to find the cause blame the patient blame the patient's emotional symptoms and most of the time invariably this presentation is seen in women and blame the woman that is the reason the somatization disorder has been considered to be stigmatizing and further the term medically unexplained symptoms what do you mean by that that means there are symptoms but i am unable to explain medically these symptoms do not arise de novo there should be something abnormality in the brain or maybe in the neurons at present the scientific advances is not there to explain these symptoms since it is medically unexplained the research has become very minimal the funding towards this research of somatization disorder is also very minimal hence this diagnosis of medically unexplained symptoms stigmatizes patient and feels that the doctor has labeled them that he is faking <clears throat> many a times even the insurance company may refuse to give the insurance coverage further somatization disorder also considered the dualistic that means body and minds are different or brain and body is different unfortunately that is not so both are unique and both are connected to each other that critique is very essential to understand somatization disorder now let's understand the impact of somatization disorder on any person if a person has somatization he has a poor quality of life he feels burden the burden of diagnostic investigation medications doctor shopping unable to go to work absenteeism further he is not contributing to the society and 30% more usage of health facility which is already overburdened frequent absenteeism from work and further this somatization disorder often goes unrecognized untreated for years and even if it is treated it is wrongly treated with maybe painkillers vitamins injections and at the same time physicians fear of missing the occult medical condition asking the patient to undergo many investigation again physicians owns anxiety may lead to repeated investigation wrong treatment wasting the available legal resources add to the burden of the society if it is communicated to a patient that it is a psychiatric illness patient may become angry and the patient may move out of that physician and the physician may lose the patient and many a time even the physician dares and says you have a psychiatric illness called a somatization disorder the patient may sue the patient the patient may sue the physician telling that how can you make a diagnosis of psychiatric hence it remains untreated for longer duration and the same time 
mistreated with various medication and over investigated and undertreated and this long term untreated misdiagnosis has a poor outcome of somatization disorder in the course and outcome studies let's look into the prevalence of somatization disorder epidemiological studies have shown clearly the lifetime prevalence of somatization disorder is 0.2% to 2% in women. In men, the prevalence is hardly 0.2%. These are community studies. That means the researcher goes to the community and looks for somatization disorder. So it is 0.2 to 2%. If you do the same study in the primary care setting, that means in primary health care center or else in a community health center. There was a study done by World Health Organization that is cross-national study of mental disorders in primary care which assessed 5,438 5, primary care patients at 15 centers in 14 countries. The prevalence of somatization disorder was 0.9 to 2.8 percent as defined by DSM 3R or ICD-10. That means again the 3 percent was the somatization disorder. However, Escobar et al. in 1989 proposed the label proposed another term called as abridged somatization for threshold for somatization case a few symptoms and six months duration was considered if the symptoms numbers were decreased duration was decreased the prevalence increased to 4.4 in community sample and 16 percent to 22 percent up to 22 percent in primary care sample that means the diagnosis also depends upon the number of symptoms, the duration, where you do the study, either it is in the community or in the primary physician. If the number of symptoms are decreased and the duration is decreased, the prevalence increases. In community sample 4%, that is twice the DSM-3R criteria. And at the same time, even in the primary care, it increases up to 22%, my dear friend. There has been a meta-analysis by Alan and his colleagues with regard to somatoform disorder and medically unexplained symptoms in primary care setting. This is a well-conducted study. I request all of you to look into this study. In this study, the point prevalence rates of strict diagnosis of somatization disorder found the range between 0.8 to 5.9% in primary care setting. That means you can take 6% of the patients visiting primary care as somatization disorder at any given point of time. Based on the criteria used for diagnosis duration, scales used, populations studied, there is a variation. But however, my dear friends, in India, it is 3 to 6 percent. Further, there are studies which looked into medically unexplained symptoms. In general population, it was 4 to 10 percent. In primary care setting, it is 20% my dear friends. These medically unexplained symptoms were non-specific, functional and somatoform bodily complaints were the term used. However, somatization disorder occurs even in children, which presents as headache in 20 to 50%, recurrent abdominal pain about 5%, 10% of the teenager reports of headache, chest pain, nausea, fatigue and various other symptoms. That means, it is well known even in children. Somatization disorder. Earlier it was said the diagnosis has to occur less than in 30 years of age. But nowadays somatization disorder can also be seen in geriatric population. In geriatric population, the course and outcome is very difficult. At the same time, diagnosing somatization disorder in geriatric is very difficult. The reason being is in geriatric patients, the comorbidities are too many. Arthritis, joint pain, back pain, muscle soreness, diabetes, hypertension, various other chronic medical conditions come in the way of diagnosing somatization disorder in geriatric population. But however, whenever the onset of somatization disorder in geriatric population, we need to do investigation thoroughly. At the same time, it is a challenge to any physician to treat a geriatric patient suffering from somatization disorder. Let's look into the etiology of somatization disorder. At this point of time, we do not know 
what is the main reason for somatization disorder what causes somatization disorder we do not know however there has been various hypotheses the hypothesis has been categorized into three important genetic organic and psychosocial but please remember exact cause is not known but however at this point of time it is a combination of genetic organic and psychosocial let's look into each one of them in genetic causes cloninger and his colleagues found that male re male relatives of patients with brickett syndrome had increased prevalence of antisocial per personality disorder alcoholism and female relatives of a male prison population revealed high prevalence of brickett syndrome that means there is some association between various disorders such as brickett syndrome antisocial personality disorder alcoholism and depression let's let's look into the organic there has been a recent literature which did a systematic review on the structural neuroimaging of somatoform disorder a review has been done a 45 studies were reviewed out of 369 articles in this study here they considered only case control studies with regard to neuroimaging in somatoform disorder what did the study report the study clearly said that somatization disorder characterized by selective alteration of large scale brain network implicated in cognitive control emotional regulation and processing stress and somatic visceral perception altered brain morphology was seen in frontal limbic somatosensory stress related religion in somatization disorder the observed structural alteration may affect somatosensory pain perception stress response and cognitive control in somatization disorder this is the summary of the systematic review however if you look at the psychosocial here it was considered as a illness behavior was the concept which was introduced by mechanic in 1970 he referred to the behavior that an individual adopts when he is ill such as if a person is ill he will go to bed he is given rest taking medication family members give attention he is been given a paid leave and of course why should he go to work he is giving all the attention hence the illness behavior concept was also been introduced hence psychosocial way of maintaining illness came into picture and also learning theory which said that it is a maladaptive behavior way of obtaining social approval attention and needs fulfilled by having somatization disorder my dear friends somatization disorder although there is a origin the origin may be at this point of time we do not know but however the reason for maintaining symptoms may be the husband giving importance to his wife whenever she has symptoms hence the symptoms are maintained for prolonged period hence we are unable to classify whether it is a organic which continues or else it is a psychosocial issue social role modeling like child observing the sick parents or siblings may also start have these having these symptoms life events stress may precipitate the symptoms since there is already a social role model in the family the children may also have the symptoms or else even the genetics also play a role here personality factors such as histrionic passive aggressive dependent personality and borderline personality may also has been considered as an important predictor for developing somatization disorder let's look into the comorbidity comorbidity is very high 80 to 90% of somatization disorder has comorbid psychiatric illness and also may have physical illness what are the psychiatric comorbidity the commonest is depression 50 to 60% of somatization disorder has comorbid depression dysthymia 50% panic disorder generalized anxiety disorder phobic disorder personality disorder obsessive compulsive disorder substance misuse my dear friends that means comorbidity is the rule in somatization disorder but at the same time you should know what are the differential diagnosis first and the foremost is organic causes such as multiple sclerosis sle endocrine condition at the same time diabetes mellitus peripheral neuropathy should be considered hypochondriasis is another differential diagnosis 
anxiety disorders, mood disorder, substance use disorder, malingering and factitious disorder needs to be considered. But however, we need to know the differentiation between somatoform disorder and hypochondriasis. Here, somatization means symptom is the focus, whereas in hypochondriasis, diagnosis is the focus. In somatization or somatoform, there are multiple symptoms and multiple systems are involved. In hypochondriasis, it will be the in invariably one system involved. Symptom relief is the focus in somatoform disorder, whereas in hypochondriasis, diagnosis and at the same time, catastrophic interpretation of the symptom is well known in hypochondriasis. No relief after reassurance. In hypochondriasis, you can see temporary relief, but however, they continue to do doctor shopping, they continue to do literature search online. At the same time, they also go to various libraries and read on hypochondriasis and they feel their illness is very new and no doctor can diagnose. That differentiation you should understand. Challenges in dealing with somatization disorder. First and the foremost, the doctor needs to understand his own challenges. He feels that he may miss something organic in reason or else something medically diagnosis. If I miss, what does the patient think? Patient may sue in the court of law or else drive to find the organic cause may lead over investigation. Sometimes doctors own ignorance, lack of skills in exploring the psychological causes, frustration not able to understand the patient's symptoms, fear of missing organic cause is the biggest problem which the physician report. Now let's move into the management of somatization disorder. You need to understand the management from P4 model. There are four important model, predisposing factor, precipitating factor, perpetuating factor and protective factors. These four important need to be understood for understanding somatization disorder at the same time treatment. What is the predisposing condition? Whether there is a genetic predisposition, is there any family member having somatization disorder? Whether anybody has antisocial personality disorder, substance use, depression? What is the precipitating event which causes somatization disorder? What is the perpetuating factor? What is that which maintains this somatization disorder for longer duration? Is there any protective factors which can be used to treat somatization disorder should be understood from the physician point of view. As I mentioned, predisposing means making someone liable or inclined to a specific attitude, action or condition. Invariably, that is genetic in nature. Precipitating factor means that happens suddenly unexpectedly or prematurely that means precipitating event perpetuating that means making things to continue or chronic making it chronic what are those conditions and protecting what are the factors which can protect against somatization disorder let's look into the evaluation now you need to understand p4 model and then you need to do the evaluation the clinical evaluation should be detailed evaluation of symptoms without challenging those symptoms that is very important initially. Take a good history. Take the past history of doctor consultation. Past history of investigation. Take them. Document them. Good thorough general physical examination. And at the same time, judicious use of diagnostic studies. If the patient has already done CT scan, please don't repeat them. If the patient has already done MRI, don't repeat other neuroimaging. Use some of the scales. Some of the scales well known in somatization is 4DSQ that is four dimensional symptom questionnaire, BDS checklist that is bodily distress syndrome checklist, BSI Bradford somatic inventory scale, also BSI 18 SOMA that is brief somatic symptom inventory 18 item version for somatization scale or BSS brief symptom scale. Further for children, children somatization inventory, modified somatic perception questionnaire, non-specific symptom screen, physical health questionnaire, patient health questionnaire. So these are the various scales are available. But the commonly used is somatic symptom scale 8. This scale is very simple 8 item which checks across back pain, chest pain, dizziness, feeling tired, headache, pain and vomiting, stomach and bowel problems and trouble sleeping. 
each of these eight items are scored over 0 to 4. 0 is not at all, a little bit is 1, somewhat 2, quite a bit 3 and very much 4. Here you need to understand, if there is none to minimal is 0 to 3 the score, if the score is 4 to 7 it is minimal and medium is 8 to 11 is the score and 12 to 15 is high, very high 16 to 32. This is a very simple scale which can be used in primary care symptom, primary care setting. PHQ-15 also called as somatic symptom severity scale. Here you are going to have 15 item. 15 item again starts from stomach pain, back pain, pain in arms, menstrual cramps, headache, chest pain, dizziness, fainting spells, feeling your heart pounds, raise, shortness of breath, pain during intercourse, constipation, nausea, gas and digestion, indigestion, feeling tired or trouble sleeping. These are the various 15 which are scored from 0, 1 and 2. 0 means not bothered, bothered little is 1 and 2 is bothered a lot. Based upon that, you are going to score this PHQ 5. And based upon 5, if the person scores 5, it is low. If the person scores 10, it is medium. If it is 15 and above, high somatic symptom severity. And however, there are some recommended scales. This recommended scales is based upon a systematic review by done by Vandrill and his colleagues in 2018. This case, this study is very important if you are doing any research in somatization disorder. Here, if you are doing a population study, both in young and adult, use this scale that is somatization subscale symptom checklist 19 item version or else PHQ can be used. If you are using in primary care, not in the community and here if you are looking at both lowest level of overlap between the somatic disease and availability of older patient is there then you can choose Freiburg complete list or else somatization subscale brief symptom inventory 53 item version can be used. If you are monitoring the symptoms, you can choose schedule for evaluating persistent symptoms can be used or else somatic symptoms experience questionnaire can be used. So these are the skills which can be used for research, my dear friends. But however, once you have done the clinical evaluation, you have used some scales to objectively measure the symptoms, you need to engage the patient. That is very essential. You need to discuss with the patient and tell them not to discuss their symptoms with any others including any other health professional and they need to be given regular visit to a doctor preferably a single doctor here over a period of time instead of challenging you need to focus on coping rather than curing the illness that is the physician goal gradual introduction of psychological concept to be done do not do prematurely avoid premature reassurance avoid prematurely telling that all these symptoms are there in your head if you do that, the patient will move to another physician. That means you'll lose the patient. At the same time, the doctor shopping continues. You need to focus on the ability and functioning rather than disability. At the same time, you need to request the patient to do online search on these symptoms. However, there has been a recent Smith's group recommendation of somatization disorder engagement and how to treat the patient. First and the foremost, schedule the appointment regularly. That means patient need to be given regular appointment rather than telling them as and when your problems are there, please come. That should not happen. A regular appointment plays a very important role. Smith's group clearly says that scheduled appointments with the patient on regular basis instead of as in need appointment should be avoided. Perform brief physical examination, focusing on the area of discomfort at each visit. Do not ignore. If the patient talks about back pain, just do a general physical examination of the back so that the patient feels the doctor has looked into his symptoms. Avoid unnecessary diagnostic procedure. Avoid unnecessary hospitalization and investigation. Avoid explaining to the patient all your symptoms are in your head. All symptoms are because of stress. Don't do that prematurely. Once you have seen the patient, understood the patient, you have gone through all the investigation and the symptoms are changing in every visit if you are able to know and if you are able to develop a very good rapport then only you have to introduce the psychological concept.
let's move into the pharmacological treatment in somatization disorder. Already you have done the clinical evaluation, you have done the objective scoring, you have done the engaging the patient thoroughly and the patient is in follow-up. Now you have two options. One is pharmacological, another one is psychosocial intervention. Pharmacological treatment doesn't mean that you give only medication. Here with medication, you need to do reassurance after a period of time, a thorough psychoeducation, and sometimes brief psychotherapy can be considered or else sleepy, that is low intensity psychotherapy to be done. The treatment with regard to medication is tricyclic antidepressant, which is considered as a gold standard, along with nowadays serotonergic antidepressants have been considered. If you look at the medications, the treatment starts with imipramine, which is a very old medicine, amitriptyline, clomipramine, loxetine, duloxetine, sertraline, venlafaxin, desvenlafaxin, sometimes even antipsychotics have been used, valanzapine, pimozide and risperidone based upon the conviction of the symptoms. There has been a systematic review has been done. This was published in 1999 by Malay and his colleagues. Here, in this study, 94 RCTs on 6 symptom syndromes met the criteria were considered. And the total number of patients which considered under this systematic review were 6,595 patients. With a median week of 9 weeks was the follow-up. If you look at the symptoms and the treatment which has been given for chronic headache, fibromyalgia, functional GI disorder, idiopathic pain, tinnitus, chronic fatigue. If you look at all these, the commonest medication which was given was tricyclic antidepressant or else SSRI. However, one need to understand here, here the medications which have been given based upon the presentation of symptoms, whether it is fibromyalgia, whether it is GI symptoms, based upon that and also to capitalize on the side effect profile of the symptoms. If the patient has arousal symptoms and patient has less sleep, amitriptyline was chosen because that causes sleep, sedation. At the same time, it causes decrease in anxiety. In patient with unexplained physical symptoms or syndrome, antidepressants are effective for improving outcome and including symptoms and disability was the conclusion by this study done in 1999, my dear friends. However, there was a Cochrane review done in 2014. This review titled as Pharmacological Intervention for Somatoform Disorder in Adults. Here in Cochrane review, they considered 26 RC RCTs. In that, it had only 2,159 participants examining the efficacy of different types of antidepressants, antipsychotics, combination or natural products. And here the median week ranged from 12 weeks. That is around 2 to 12 weeks was the median range. That is the range of average of study. This review found very low quality evidence with regard to pharmacological agents. But however, although like any other Cochrane review which says none of the medication is effective, or very few Cochrane reviews said that we have good RCTs. Of course, the Cochrane goes with the gold standard measures. But however, the patient do not come to the clinic with the gold standard symptoms in idealistic condition. Patient report to us in the idealistic world, not in idealistic world, in the practical world with comorbid condition, with stress, with psychological symptoms. At the same time, he would have done the internet search. However, the practical understanding at this point of time is tricyclic antidepressant and SSRI can be considered as a first line of treatment where psychological treatment availability is sparse. Here, in this Cochrane review, they said, study concluded that short-term efficacy of pharmacological intervention can be considered, but the effects of antidepressant should be considered with the effect versus side effect. Further, another a small review was done with regard to use of electroconvulsive therapy. This was published in 2021. In this again, there was a review done which, which reviewed hardly had five single case studies, one case series and one open trial. And they said ECT can be considered 
for somatization disorder wherever there is a depression is very severe there it can be helpful that means there is an indication ECT can be considered in treatment resistant somatization disorder or else if there is a comorbid psychiatric condition and that is a very important but however this study also said that we do not have good rigorous studies well controlled studies blind studies are not available and the evidence which has been collated in this review is of low quality hence we need to do a systematic study with regard to ECT and somatization disorder let's move into psychotherapy what does psychotherapy say about somatization disorder whenever you approach somatization disorder one need to understand that patient should feel their symptoms their emotions thoughts and feelings have been understood by the physician that means you need to give time patient needs to be heard out properly and you should not change the agenda let the patient speak about his symptoms in which the reality of symptoms was recognized and existence of stressful life event should be made aware slowly over a period of time linking the symptoms to the life events to the stress and the emotional state should be linked over a period of time there was a short term psychodynamic psychotherapy review was done this was done in 2020 by Abbas and his colleagues in this meta-analysis 17 RCTs of short term psychodynamic psychotherapy was done but however treatment fidelity was a big question and they clearly said that that short term psychodynamic psychotherapy did very well in somatoform disorders or somatization syndrome another study which was published in 2021 short term psychodynamic psychotherapy for functional somatic disorder a systematic review and meta analysis was done by a same abbas and his colleagues in this a meta analysis of 37 trial were considered in that the number of patient were 2094 abbas et al concluded that in this study the average sessions were 13 follow up were up to 13 months across all studies somatic symptoms improved the improvement was seen from moderate to large size effect was seen and long term follow up up to one year was considered and they found the maintenance of improvement was continued up to one year. One more study which was published in 2013 with regard to mindfulness based therapies in somatization disorder. In this 13 studies were identified which fulfilled the criteria for analysis of mindfulness based therapy in treating somatization disorder here also in this study they said that it reduced in various outcome measures such as reducing pain symptom severity depression anxiety and quality of life that means even mindfulness based therapy can be considered as a treatment for somatization disorder my dear friends there was one more study published in 2017 with regard to psychological intervention of children with functional somatic symptoms a systematic review and meta analysis was done by bonavin and his colleagues in this study 27 studies were included in this review and this review looked into psychological treatment and it clearly said that psychological treatment reduced the symptom slow disability and school absenteeism one more study which looked into the internet based therapy versus face to face therapy that is internet based cognitive behavioral therapy versus face to face cognitive behavioral therapy and it included 1418 participants and my dear friends the both there was no difference between face to face therapy versus internet based cognitive based therapy my dear friends but now the evidence is accumulating towards cognitive behavioral therapy in somatization my dear friends what does it say first and the foremost in cbt especially in somatization disorder a contract need to be developed between the patient and the physician and listing of the symptoms at the same time number of sessions number of duration of some number of duration of session and 
how long the duration will be continued will be discussed and the realistic short term and long term goals will be fixed and it will be reviewed regularly and focus on practical ways of coping with the symptoms and limitations should be the focus in CBT. Encourage the patient to keep daily log of thoughts, feelings and behaviors. I have done a separate video on CBT. Please go, go and look into that video. Promote daily physical activity, social activity, recreational activity and occupational activity. Promote daily relaxation. Promote the patient control and autonomy of his symptoms and activities. However, the CBT also can include relaxation, behavioral management, recognizing thoughts and feelings and also cognitive challenging and restructuring, emotional regulation, interpersonal skills training are important in CBT my dear friends. And you need to have the phases of CBT. There are three important phases. Phase one is focusing on somatic symptoms at the same time relaxation and behavioral management. In phase 2, focusing on recognizing the thoughts and emotion, regulating the emotion and at the same time interact effectively with the environment and slowly introducing to work. Phase 3, to enhance interpersonal skills and reduce the sick role is very essential. And this is the chart which can be used for daily monitoring of symptoms, situations, emotions and thoughts and rating of the symptoms can be done over 0 to 5 and exactly this similarly emotions can be done from 0 to 100 and thoughts are documented so that he can describe these thoughts, emotions and the situation with the therapist and the therapist can understand the cognitive skills of the patients, what are the cognitive schemas, errors and also automatic negative thoughts and that can be challenged over a period of time. However, the psychotherapies which have been studied in somatizations are various in number from psychoeducation, problem solving, internet-based CBT, face-to-face -face CBT, exposure and ERP, relaxation, stress management, mindfulness therapy, acceptance and commitment therapy and homework task assignments. With this my dear friends, the treatment has both that is medications and psychosocial treatment combination is very essential you need to engage the patient now let's understand the course and outcome of somatization disorder there has been hardly few studies with regard to understanding the course and outcome of somatization disorder recently in 2009 there was a study done it had hardly six studies on medically unexplained symptoms, six studies on hypochondriasis and one study on abridged somatization disorder. This study clearly said that chronic is the course with episodic exaggeration which may be running for several months to year requiring long term medication. If left untreated, this syndrome can cause severe disability. The disability may be with regard to daily functioning, unemployment, poor work for performance, unemployment, psychological disability, decreased quality of life, alcohol and substance use is the course. The outcome of the study also said that 50 to 75 percent of the patient improve over a period of time, but however, 10 to 30 percent continues to be symptomatic after many years. What are the risk factors for somatization disorder? Being female, heightened attention to the medical symptoms, substance use disorder, neglect during childhood, severe stress, physical and sexual abuse during childhood, chaotic lifestyle or trauma, chronic illness during childhood, presence of anxiety or depression, presence of certain personality disorders will lead to poor outcome in somatization disorder. To conclude my dear friends, somatization disorder looks very simple but patient suffers a lot. It causes severe disability. It causes severe impairment in quality of life. And it also has impact on health economics of the nation. Not only that, it causes severe strain on the meager health resources available. The reason being 
रॉन्ग डायग्नोसिस और नॉट डायग्नोजिंग ओवर इन्वेस्टिगेशन एड्स टू द बर्डन ऑन द हेल्थ इकोनॉमिक्स ऑफ द कंट्री बट हवेवर अर्ली डायग्नोसिस एंड एंगेजिंग इज द ओनली वे आउट इन ट्रीटिंग सोमेटाइजेशन डिजॉर्डर एंड इन द ट्रीटमेंट कंबाइंड बोथ मेडिकेशन एंड साइको सोशल इंटरवेंशन इज अ मस्ट ट्रीटमेंट अलोन इज नॉट फीजिबल यू नीड टू कंबाइन बोथ इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड यू नीड टू लेजिटमाइज द पेशेंट सफरिंग यू नीड टू रिमूव द ब्लेम दट द पेशेंट हैज द सिम्टम्स इन इज हेड डू नॉट डू री एश्योरेंस अर्ली ट्राई टू एंगेज द पेशेंट एंड प्लीज अंडरस्टैंड द पेशेंट सिम्टम्स द बैकग्राउंड ऑफ द सिम्टम्स लाइफ स्टाइल स्ट्रेस ऑफ द पेशेंट ट्राई टू ब्रिंग द अलायंस with the patient with regard to patients improvement with regard to work socialization employment and becoming functional this is the goal of somatization disorder treatment my dear friends so please understand this somatization disorder looks very simple but difficult to treat to any physicians thank you very much for giving your valuable time stay safe